welcome. Introduction to this video because I lost some of the footage to start with. So anyway, as you guessed by the title, <clears throat> I'm fitting central heat into my house. That's because it's freezing. The house has never had central heating and it's only ever had at the most two wood fires downstairs, but that was no good. The heat never went upstairs. Um, okay, so the options in France to heat your house are one, uh, gas-fired central heating, as in the UK, um, but unless you're in a town centre, a big, big town, you're not going to have gas. Oil-fired central heating, um, exactly the same as in the UK, you have a tank outside, it gets filled up and, and uh, you have a boiler inside, or um, gas-fired on LPG, which is this, similar to the oil. So you have a gas boiler, but it runs off a big tank in your front garden. And then last but not least, electric. Uh, now, to heat your house with electric is expensive, uh, very expensive. Um, so they, in France, they're pushing the, um, uh, what do you call them, heat pumps. Um, now, the problem I've got is this house is not well insulated and it's drafty, it's massive, it's made of stone, uh, it's got double glazing, but that's it. I don't think the heat pump will be good enough to heat the house through radiators. You could put uh, underfloor heating in, but that would just be a massive upheaval. Um, especially with the floors, quite a lot of my wood. So that wouldn't work very well either. So I need to work out how to heat this house with electricity using a heat pump. Now there are two types. One is a low temperature one. So the water coming out is about 40 degrees to 45 degrees. Then there's a high temperature one, which is exactly the same as a boiler output temperature of around 70 to 75. But how would I know which one to pick? Uh, the low temperature one is about three and a half grand. The high temperature one is about five and a half. And it's not very efficient. We'll go into all that later on, I think, because um, probably no one's watched this intro anyway. They probably skipped on, but anyway, so what I've decided to do is split this into a couple of parts. This one is finding radiators, sourcing them, fitting them, running the pipe work and show you the setup that I've come up with in order to test whether a low temperature would do the job. Crazy. Anyway, we'll join the video, me having gone and collected some radiators from a, an architectural salvage place. Now the radiators you'll see are quite expensive, about £400 per radiator if you bought them uh, from a shop. Um, but these uh, were about 60, 60 euros a radiator, sometimes less, um, just because they were over, over order. Anyway, you can now rejoin the video with me having collected those radiators. Okay, so this one was in a loft. It was mine a long time ago. I just, just put it in the loft, as you can see, it's quite dirty, but it didn't cost me anything. This radiator is brand new, and um, my brother uh, overordered by one radiator. Um, so I agreed to do some work at his house, and uh, he gave me this, which is good. This radiator at the back there I picked up yesterday um, on a classified ad site in France, Le Bon Coin. I'm sure that's exactly how they say it as well. Um, 30 euros. Right, so I've just got back. Um, 30 minute drive with one, two, three, four, five new radiators, brand new in packaging. All right, all with brackets. So, I paid 
260 euros for all five so that's pretty good right so <clears throat> i've done some research on these particular radiators and the lowest they'll work is 30 degrees um we're talking about the circulated primary circuit water temperature 30 degrees centigrade the maximum is 175 it gives you a little cheeky it all so at 30 degrees it gives out 645 watts and we're more interested in the 50 50 degrees 1288 watts uh, so we can use that to work out what radiator is best for which room and where they're going to go okay so <clears throat> There's two types of radiators. Um, there's this type um, where there's a bottom entry. Let's see if you can see that. Two tabs there. And uh, that's that one there. Um, <clears throat> then the other type of radiator is the standard one that you recognize in the UK where you have two radiator valves one on each end okay with the bottom feed type of radiator you get flow and return in here um, and it needs to be the right connection because what happens is the flow there's an internal pipe in the radiator which comes up you can see there goes into this T piece which is controlled by a um, thermostatic valve in there and then what you end up with is something like this radiator with a thermostat on the side it's quite standard in France however that won't fit in eventually with my plans but for the moment I'm going to put a um, thermostatic valve in there and then eventually that will just be blanked off so the reason I'm using manuals and not thermostatic will become apparent later on but for the moment um, it, when when the heating's turned on all radiators will be turned on and you have to turn it on and off individually with these so they come pre uh, fitted with three eighths um, thread but they handily give you an adapter for half inch, which these are. And then uh, pipe goes over there with the uh, nut. Okay, so the other pipe goes through there and we've got 50 mil before the beam. So we, <laughs> it's 40 mil to our mark and the beam starts there. So I think we'll just get away with it, literally just. This one was tricky because it hit a joist. Um, so I just drill slightly at an angle and you can just see, no problem. Okay, it's pretty simple fitting the radiators, just drill down, well, except for the um, bathroom because there's a heated floor. So I built this little jig there and then it drilled through and you end up with a, uh, an angled hole like that. So hopefully that will help us out, but I'm not, I'm not entirely certain where this is going to end up. So I do the same on the other side and then uh, see where it comes out. Thank you. 
Okay, <clears throat> let me give you an example of why we need to heat him quick. Uh, Twelve point four. Now it's ten point one when I got up this morning in here. It's pretty cold. Today we've got to connect this radiator and that radiator. Now I don't want to lift this floor obviously um, but you can see where the joists run and I know that there's nothing in the way because uh, I've got all the pictures from when I did the ceiling downstairs. I can't go in this wall because of the beam. Uh, so what, I'm, what I might actually do is uh, cut a hole in this ceiling. Okay. Right, well. That escalated a bit. And I'm also running a cable that will go in there. Terrible, terrible lighting. So yeah, pipes come up there, run across the here, and then down to the radiators. It's cut a massive hole in the ceiling. Right, there both pipes are in, done. <coughs> okay. So I've labelled these up and then I've got uh, our connectors there. Okay, so they're all the ones, all the pipes from this side of the house. Uh, they start over there. Let's have a look. And then they run this way, joining into the radiators as we go. And then along here, through there, through here. Uh, silly me, put it on the wrong side of that cable, but never mind. Sort that out. And then I've had to use bends. So uh, it's a bit unfortunate, but there's no way, just no way I could do it without. Did try. And then I've got another four coming up. And they go all the way to the top. There's just one loop there, which uh, is joined with that 90 degree bend. The other two go up, they're clipped and they run off to the dressing room in the main bedroom upstairs. So I want a place where every single radiator can come back to. So two pipes to each radiator kind of come back to a central point and I can deal with it from there. On that wall there, I'm going to build a, a board and run all the pipes back to there. So these wires, again, were all temporary when I didn't know where anything was going. Uh, and they are data cables, satellite cables, power cable for sockets, power cable for lights, for the top floor, my bedroom in the office, and the cinema. Okay, so I've just put in these uh, threaded rods into the stone with chemical fix. Use the laser level to, which is over there somewhere, to level it up. So it just makes it a bit neater. That's it. So the first thing we've got to do, put the manifold on. Right, the <coughs> manifold is now mounted. So, right, the pipes. Doing like a shrizzle across there. <clears throat> then they're joining with these overhead pipes from the upstairs. They go down, round, and into there. Then these all come down here. Here, yeah, join in here, run across to the, the warren of pipe work. Uh, so that, yeah, there you go. Come along there. Join those. 
Uh, so you've got these six over here from the downstairs, the lounge, they come across. These four are from the office and the bedroom. These four here are the ones I've just put in, so that's, uh, yeah, I've lost myself now. Oh no, wait, hold on. That's the ensuite and the dressing room. And I did get a question actually, someone question why uh, do I have a radiator in the dressing room? Uh, because if you don't, then it's a cold spot. And if you've got humid air in the bedroom, say overnight, whatever, then it'll condense and things will go moldy. So that's why. But I've got a thermostatic valve on that, but I'll take you all through that on the control section of these videos. These six here are the front guest bedroom, the downstairs bathroom, radiator and the back guest bedroom. This is how it turned out today, pretty good. I'm running out of space, but um, you probably saw that in the video Wednesday. Um, I've mounted my heat exchanger because it's the furthest component that's going to go furthest right. Um, I've got this board in now to surface mount the pipes. I might have to just alter this a little bit here, but I can do that as we go along. So my next uh, idea is twofold. I've got to connect up the diesel heater to this side of the heat exchanger. Uh, this side, I'll run central heating pump, thermostatic mixing valve, T junctions for an expansion tank, and um, oh yeah, safety blow off valve with filling loop. So, uh, okay, we've got the heat exchanger um, flow out from the heat exchanger goes into the thermostatic valve which mixes with the return water to give us whatever temperature we want by regulating this. That's the filling loop and also safety valve so if um, it's too uh, hot or the pressure builds up too high then at the bottom the water drops out. That's where I put cold water in which I'll do shortly and then it continues at whatever temperature we want into the pump, through the pump, into the flow and then off to each individual radiator and then returns here down and either gets remixed with hot water for circulation or returns to the heat exchanger. Pressure gauge. Uh, I didn't have a proper one so this is just one that you use on a tap that I've put a, I don't know how well that's going to work. Might work, might not work, I'm not sure yet. We can see what the flow temperature, the return and the flow temperatures are, and then right on this side here is where I'm going to put the expansion tank on here. But I'm going to cinch up all the um, settings, uh, connections, and then tighten all these nuts. Okay, so all the white pipe is uh, semi-flexible PEX. Aluminium and PEX. The uh, method I'm using to fix them is the crimp um, crimp tool. You might have seen in one of my earlier videos. Uh, it's quite effective, quite easy to do. Um, also, this is the end result. So you can see the expansion tank, the pump, everything is now all fixed in place, ready to go. Um, so that's it for this video. And uh, the next video, I'll fill it up, test it connect the diesel heater and run it up. So that should be a good one.